This one caught my eye. Scientists have just created a lithium battery that doesn't actually use lithium ions. It uses hydrogen ions to store and release the energy. And the early results are pretty wild. We're talking uh, theoretical energy density up to six times higher than today's best lithium ion batteries. Let's jump into it. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much to all of the uh, people on the channel. Thousands of uh, new subscribers over the last week or two. So very nice to have you here. It's really, I really appreciate your time. So this new development comes from a team of researchers at Yilin University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, four institutions worked together on it. So it's a very big, uh, very big ordeal. And uh, what they've done is build the first room temperature rechargeable hydride ion battery, which sounds complicated, admittedly. So instead of lithium ions, which are positively charged, I'll try and make this sort of simple for, you know, for the layperson, so then we all kind of understand what's going on. So instead of lithium ions, which are positively charged, this new system uses negatively charged hydrogen ions, and that's what makes it so interesting, because hydrogen ions carry more energy and react differently inside a cell. Early lab data shows a specific capacity of around 984 milliamp hours per gram and three times higher than the best lithium ion batteries we have today. The theoretical limit is even higher, roughly six times current levels. So yeah, there are people saying on the internet if uh, if you could achieve three, four, five times or six times, then that would that would mean basically you can basically just have a very small light battery in your car to get the same sort of range that we have now, which would also mean that um, you'd get more range because your car is more efficient, because it's lighter. So if you put it into context, if you have a Tesla Model Y today, you can do 600 kilometers, six times that energy density would theoretically mean two and a half thousand kilometers of range. Obviously, it's not happening soon, but it shows there's there's a lot of potential there. Here's how it works. They built a rare earth based electrolyte using cerium hydride coated with barium hydride. That coating stabilizes the structure and allows fast hydride ion movement at room temperature. So it actually, it's actually the first time anyone managed to get hydride ions to move efficiently without heating the material up to crazy temperatures. That's why this is a big breakthrough at the minute. They even built a small multi-layer prototype cell and it produced 1.9 volts and powered an LED light. That might sound not very impressive, it's not obviously it's, it's tiny, but it proves the chemistry works and they can basically scale that up. So that's obviously the next step in the, in the chain. So this was published on the internet in September, on the 17th of September. Now the science part, it, in normal lithium batteries, energy is stored when lithium atoms move between the anode and the cathode. In this one, hydrogen atoms gain an extra electron, forming a hydride ion because it's negatively charged. It behaves totally differently, and it's more energy. It, it's more energetic, and in theory, avoids some of the issues that we see in lithium batteries, like uh, dendrite formation, those uh, the little spikes that form inside the the cell that can short out the cell and that brings about uh, degradation of the cell capacity. So if you're wondering whether this will suddenly replace lithium, no, that would actually be uh, sodium ion chemistry at the minute in the next year or two or three, that will be replacing lithium ion phosphate chemistry. But there are still big challenges ahead here because the first prototypes lost capacity very, very quickly after maybe 20 cycles, which is crazy. So it actually went to, it lost half the capacity in 20 or 30 cycles. That's, I mean, that's terrible. So Early stage stuff, this is obviously a very early prototype, but the capacity in the first place was really, really great. So if they can figure that out, that would be an amazing thing. It, is, it does seem like it's fixable though. There is a couple of people in the industry have, that have said it is a fixable issue. The other challenge is materials. Cerium's a rare earth metal, uh, more common than copper, interestingly, but it's, ex but it's expensive to refine. So large scale production would need a cheaper path. Still, what is remarkable here is how quickly battery chemistry is evolving, thank you to AI-driven material research. And, uh, you know, the, I mean, if you look at the amount of money that was put into sodium ion chemistry recently, in the last year or two, almost nothing, very, very small amount of money, and yet it's basically superseding lithium ion phosphate chemistry, which has been around for a, a good few years. So these hydride systems have been talked about for decades, but nobody could get them stable or conductive enough. Now, with machine learning models and AI, 
running material simulations, researchers can actually find viable formulas much faster. They can do this theoretically on paper and then put it into a lab, pay some people to figure it out. Remember, the global battery market is in an overcapacity phase right now. There are too many lithium factories chasing too few orders. That's the big issue at the minute. So if a new chemistry comes along with even double the density and lower degradation, companies will simply jump on it immediately, basically. South Korea's battery capacity util utilization, as I mentioned in a recent video in the last week, I think it was, under 50% right now. No, it's not doing very well. And uh, there's pressure to build or pressure to find the next big thing, something lighter, cheaper, safer, which is obviously sodium ion chemistry. If you think back three years ago, sodium ion chemistry was not overly good. It was not very energy dense. Now it's actually more energy dense than uh, LFP chemistry. So it's definitely an amazing thing at the minute. Speaking of safety, this hydride ion approach also avoids any flamm flammable organic compounds or electrolytes. That means potentially lower fire risk and more thermal stability, a big deal for EVs and grid storage. And I say potentially because there's a bit of a caveat. Could we see cars running on this maybe in the next decade? Maybe around 2033, 2035, 2037, something like that. I think that would be realistic. Not in the next few years. I think for the next two, three, four years, it's all about sodium ion chemistry. That's what we're going to start seeing in the cars we go and, we go and buy. Battery research typically takes about 10 years from first proof of concept to commercial product. Even LFP chemistry, lithium ion phosphate, that was around for, for quite a long time, many years before really it got uh, invested in and, and built to a commercial standard. And we started seeing that in cars in 2019. And now it's, I think this year, it's meant to be 65% of the cars we buy will come with LFP chemistry. But even if this particular version doesn't make it, something derived from it probably will. It's one of those breakthroughs that opens up a whole new direction, similar to how lithium ion phosphate started as a lab curiosity and now powers millions of cars. That's, it's a very big deal. So if they can scale it, then we're looking at lighter packs, higher range, better safety, all with hydrogen playing the starring role, not just as a fuel, but as an ion inside the battery itself. If you're interested in this, you can, I'll put some links below and you should just give it a Google because it's a fascinating topic. I'd love to hear what you think. Would you trust a hydrogen based battery in your EV or do you think solid state will reach production first? Let me know in the comments. I read as many as I can. There's actually just too many at the minute. Uh, obviously, I think I've had hundreds of thousands of views in the last day or two. And if you, if you, obviously I can't read all the comments, but I do try. And if you're a subscriber to the channel or a member, you get prioritized. So you go to the top of the queue and I see those comments first. I endeavor to always read those. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe. You're very welcome to do that. And I really appreciate your time.